Brandon Graham, one of the all-time Eagle greats and one of my personal favorites. A man BGZ just said he would prefer to play another two years and he would love to have a 15-year career end here in Philadelphia. I'm going to take a look at the actual market value of his contract. I'm going to tell you what I think could become available in terms of being a team-friendly deal and how you can swing that and alter it. And I'll go over how you break up a contract. I'll try to do my best Howie Roseman job, guys. All right, y'all. Let's get into today's topic. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. Man, Brandon Graham, up for contract. I know right away a lot of you guys are probably like, man, this is a sticky situation here because you have an all-time Eagles great. You got a guy that if the role is right and the money's right, of course you want back. But those things have got to be perfect, right? You can't you can't overdo it. I was a very much an outspoken critic of that $14 million we paid to Fletcher Cox last year. I love Fletch. Fletch is one of my favorite guys. No animosity towards Fletch at all. And, of course, I want dudes to get their money. I'm not trying to take bread out of people's mouths. But there is a salary cap, man. And, you know, every decision you make does actually affect other decisions. And, look, Fletch had a fairly decent year last year once we kind of plugged all the pieces in. I mean, the guy had seven and a half sacks. You know, he rose to the occasion. But it's always a money, you know, kind of situation here, right? There's always a decision financially with these contracts. And today... I want to start off by breaking down what is the roster, who's under contract, and what do we do from here. Uh, today's video is in collaboration with Philly Mike. So Philly Mike from the Philly Talk podcast. Him and I, you know, we're friends. We, we converse back and forth on the phone. We were exchanging text messages, kind of going over Brandon Graham's contract. So uh, just give a shout out to Philly Mike because him and I kind of together came up with our video ideas t- today to put this all together in terms of uh, tangible pieces of information that could be consumed here. So. Shout out my guy, Mike. I appreciate you, bro. So the first two guys we have under contract, both of these dudes just signed deals fairly recently, so they're not going anywhere for a couple more years. Josh Sweat on one side, Hassan Reddick on the other side. Those two guys are locked in. Nothing to worry about there. Hassan Reddick does have some depth that's uh, behind him and Patrick Johnson and Kyron Johnson. Those guys were, you know, one was drafted in 2021. The other one was drafted in 2022. There's, there's a little bit of depth there. But when you get back to Josh Sweat's side of the ball, I think that's where the death issue becomes a little tricky here because you have Derek Barnett still underneath a a deal. He is still under contract for next season. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, is there any way we can save some money there? I'd have to play with the numbers a little bit more. That's a separate video, guys. I will say he carries a $10 million dead cap hit, so you better be real careful with how you're messing around with that if you're going to cut him. After that, we saw Janaris Robinson under contract. I know it's easy to forget him because I believe he got put on injured reserve, and I think we kind of forgot about him there, but he's also on that side. It's, you know, a prospect here. And then we have Teron Jackson somehow. According to the Foot Up Eagles website, apparently he wasn't signed to a futures deal, but he's still under contract. So when you add all those guys up together, you do have seven edge defenders under contract. I guess the question we would start off this conversation with is, do you feel like that's enough? Do you feel like the depth there is quality enough? Do you feel like there's enough youth there on top of the depth to then maybe pick a guy out of the draft that you think could have an impact and come in and play a major role and then also move forward? I mean, that's the first question. I'm not saying we're all going to be in agreement there, but I mean, that's the first thing you have to ask yourself given that list. Now, if you look at that list and you say, you know what, there's some dudes you named there, Steve, they're not guaranteed to be on the roster. Those guys could potentially just be camp body center. I'm not thinking we got seven guys. I'm thinking that maybe we need to bring back Brandon Graham. What can you tell me about the contract structure? Well, what I can tell you is, is that there's different ways of looking at it. You can go over the cap and take a look at over the cap. I, I prefer to use Spotrack, but either way, guys, as long as you're really using something with consistency and you can break down how they came up with the numbers, I think it's, it, it's all fair game. So when you go to Spotrack, there's different ways of looking at this. You can go to their statistical analysis, which takes their age into consideration and also takes their production, and it spits out a number. When you do that, it tells you that Brandon Graham's fair market value by that way is $5.7 million, which I do think is very fair. But they also have something where you can take the market value and weight it towards the age and see similar contracts, and then that allows you to actually perform a linear regression because of age and things like that to see what the contract would be. And when you do that, it comes up to one year, $4.69 million. They give a suggested contract there of two years, $9.38 million. Okay. I'm going to explain to you how I would structure said contract. The first thing I'm going to go do here is I know how Howie would want to maneuver this. And 
he's probably only going to want a base salary of, of the veteran minimum. And then everything else that's due to the player, he's probably going to prorate it inside of a signing bonus. Prorate it means, guys, just like paying your credit card, just like paying your car, a loan on your car, you get the tangible assets. So in this case, we're talking about the signing bonus. And then while you don't pay it back, it's the team has to then pay it back to the league. So I hate to say this because it's really – this is a really bad way of looking at it from a, a personal standpoint, but in this case, Brandon Graham is the uh, you know slightly used vehicle that we're purchasing, and then the prorated bonus is what we're paying back to the league, who's like the car dealership, all right? So this is how I have it worked out. In 2023, he would have a $1.165 million vet minimum guaranteed contract, okay? From that, I would basically take – the $1.165 million, which would be the vet minimum for 23, and then the 1.1, I'm sorry, the $1.255 million, that would be the vet minimum for 2024. I would take those two figures together. I would add them up, guys. And then basically what I would do here is I would figure out what that comes to. $2.42 million. Okay, so that would be like a two-year $2.42 million with a 6.96 signing bonus. That's kind of the structure here. How much would he make in 2023 underneath the proposed contract structure I just gave you? And I don't know about the guarantees, guys. I, I Who knows? <laughs> I would guess that they're probably going to fully guarantee the actual, well, the base salary has to be fully guaranteed because it's a vet minimum. But you get what I'm saying. Obviously, your signing bonus, it'd basically be a fully guaranteed contract because your signing bonus you're going to get more than likely. I don't see a way out of that. All right, so in 2023, what I would do here simply put is take the $1.165 million dollars and then I would take the remaining 696 that I did inside of a signing bonus. I would prorate that over three years, and I would divide that number by three. So basically, you take the $1.165 million, which is the VET minimum guarantee. That would be your base salary. Then you add in that prorated bonus that we just talked about, which would be $2.32 million on the 2023 season. So basically, you're looking at a cap hit for 2023 to bring Brandon Graham back of $3.485 million dollars to have a veteran player of his presence and ability in the locker room. Carry that into 2024, and what does that look like, guys? You're going to take the $1.255 million, which is the vet minimum contract. That's your base salary. And then you're going to plug in that $2.32 million uh, prorated bonus that you gave him. He's already been paid, so we're just paying back the league at this point. And that's going to carry a cap hit of $3.57, $3.575 million, guys. And that leaves one more year of dead money on the contract. So after he's been done and retired, you'd pay back $2.32 million, which to me is not a big deal. And with all the new TV revenue and, and rights coming in and the inevitability of the cap rising up, you should be able to easily offset that cost there. To me, that would be a very, very effective contract. My numbers basically being two years, $9.38 million. And then, like I said, guys, I would take my $1.165 and my $1.255 million dollars add those together and that would be my base salary that I'd be paying him and then I would add that 6.9 million dollar signing bonus to equal the total value that I told you so that's how I would structure this contract personally I don't know how the Eagles would do that I, I don't you know it's it's just a way that looking at the fair market value looking at is there any way to get a home discount here uh, trying to think outside the box for like just knowing Howie and seeing how Howie has structured contracts for so many years. I know this guy loves to put things into a prorated bonus. That's that's the way he loves to do things. I think this would be a fair contract, man. I would love to have Brandon Graham back for another year or two. I think it helps out with the roster. I think it gives you an opportunity to draft a guy and develop and have a really good veteran presence in the locker room to help carry that guy along. And then you also got Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, you know, Brandon Graham, who else you, you draft? You got Patrick Johnson, you got Kyron Johnson, who's an up-and-coming player, right? And then you figure out, do you, you know, what's the role for Derek Barnett, right? What's the role for Janaris Robinson? What's the role for Teron Jackson? What's the role for the guy that you drafted? Then you, you figure that stuff out later. All right, guys, leave your thoughts down below. What do you think? Brandon Graham wants to come back to Philly for two more years. We're trying to keep the core, the nucleus of this team together the best we can while still moving on from certain pieces. You, you have to. You got to keep the guys that you think that you can get underneath contract for a reasonable price to kind of keep some continuity, but then you also have got to be realistic and say, at some point, we got to draft some dudes. You're going to have to have young guys who can contribute. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all's time and attention. Leave your comments down below, and I'll see y'all on the next video.